channel today I have a sewing vlog for you and I'm excited I have been meaning to make this pattern for ages it's been in my stash since it was released and I've had a lot of people messaging me as well asking if I was gonna be doing this vlog so here we are and it is for the Tilly and the Buttons Billy and this is a jumper dress or a like sweater this pattern goes up to I believe let's have a look a UK 24. I know Tilly is working on extending her pattern sizing. I've seen that she's looking for like plus size testers at the moment. Yeah, um, I'm going to be probably making the four, which is a UK size 12. That's usually the pattern size that I go for. And then sometimes I have to alter it a little bit on the shoulders, but with her patterns, because as you guys know, if you watch my vlogs, you'll know that I make a lot of Tilly patterns. So usually I cut out a straight size four and that's usually fine. And sometimes I have to do a, a shoulder lift, but other than that, that's pretty much fine. So again, I always leave my measurements for reference in the description box below if you want to know what I am. The waist is 30 inches. Yes, yeah, so that makes sense actually, yeah, because my waist is about 29 inches and I'm in between the three and the four. So I just make the four because my hips are on the, on the slightly larger scale of those two. So around the 39 inch mark. So yeah, that's kind of why I think I do that. Even though my bust is probably more like the size two, I'm like a pear shape. Anyway, so yes, everything you need to know is on the back of the pattern and in the instructions, but obviously I'm gonna show you kind of the processes of putting this together in this video. I have got a kind of heavy weight fabric for this. So it's the sunniest day and it's making me think of spring. And here I am about to make a really heavy weight jumper dress or jumper um and it is this gorgeous heart print fabric from by grazia by grazia i don't know how you say it but that's one of the two <laughs> i'll leave it in the description box anyway linked for you guys and it's this really nice like sweatshirty kind of stretch fabric it would make a really great um like track jacket type thing as well but i thought it'd be really cool i had it in my stash and i was like Do you know what this would be a super cute um billy so that's what i'm going to use it's got a lovely stretch to it and then I'm also going to use this burgundy ribbing from Sew Me Sunshine. And I did get two ribbings, but I went with this one. There's a burgundy and then also this kind of like pinky colour. And up against, if you see like up against them, they both match. But I think the burgundy just sets it off better. I think if I went for a dress, at least it's an outfit in one. And I don't have to worry about what I'm going to pair it with because it's a garish print. I don't really wear jeans, so... It's probably more sensible if I wear, if I just make the dress. So yeah, I probably will. I'll probably make the, sw the plain sweatshirt dress with a quarter sleeve and keep it simple. So I'm gonna go ahead, cut my pattern. I think I've already cut it. Um, yeah, I've already cut my pieces. I need to cut out my fabric and then I can get started. So just to also say as well, this this weather is just, it just makes me so much happier. Like, I don't know about you guys. As soon as the sun is shining, I just feel like everything that I've been worried about and everything that's like been getting me down personally, as you guys know, I've mentioned a few things on my, on my videos. Um, it just feels like I can tackle life a little bit easier when the sun is shining, especially when like it's coming through my window and it's keeping me warm and like, you know, all those things. So yeah, hopefully this video is gonna be a lot happier than the past ones that I've made. Um, yeah, I'm feeling I'm feeling brighter and, and better at the moment, despite personal things, so it's good. Um, right, I'm gonna crack on and cut out my sizes and then we can get going. Apologies for the messy table. This is what you get when you're a crafter. So I've got my pocket and my front bodice, so I need to Lay the pocket facings over the front bodice, right sides together, pin them at the seams and sew it. So let's just take these pattern pieces off. Front piece, <laughs> pocket going everywhere, right. So we've got a front piece like that and it's right sides together. So this pocket one will go on there and then the other pocket will go on the other side. Let's move it out the way for now. Let's do this one first. So I'm gonna match up the notches because it's a stretch fabric as well. Um, it's just about like 
being delicate with it because I find you don't want it to stretch out of place if you're pulling it around and stuff. So I'll match up my notches first before I do anything else. Oh yeah, cool. Let's match that bit up to there. So now that my notches are done, I can pin in between the notches. So just making sure that the edges match. And then I'm gonna stitch down there. So before I stitch, this is what I've got my sewing machine setting on. I've set it to the zigzag stitch and it is 2.5 um, length and then 1.5, oh no, sorry, I need to put it on. 1.5 length and 1.5, 2.5 length, 1.5 zigzag, which is what it suggests here. Um, so I might put it on three, I'll see what it, it uh, looks like when I start stitching. So, so there's that, and then I've also put my foot tension on two, but you can put it on one or two. This hasn't got a lot of stretch in the fabric, it's a lot thicker, so I like to have mine on two so it still kind of feeds through okay. Um, and we're ready to go, so I can go ahead and stitch that pocket on. It's skipping a little bit, which I don't know why it does that. Honestly, I've tried so many things and it's got a brand new needle in the machine, so it doesn't like it. It doesn't like jersey, my sewing machine. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna stitch ahead and then I'll see if I can do some troubleshooting. These are the me needles that I'm using. I'm using a 90 needle because it's quite a medium weight fabric and I still get skipping on my stitches when I use a zigzag stitch sometimes. I've mentioned this in previous videos when I've sewn knit fabrics before, like jersey fabrics or stretch, and I just don't know how to solve it really. Um, I've tried, oh god, apologies, I've just realised I've got like one thumb that's blue. Ah! Anywho, <laughs> I've tried several things. I don't really want to mess with the tensions. Um, I've done obviously the foot tension, which is on two, um, and then obviously it's a zigzag, I've got a brand new needle in there, so I don't know what it could be. If anyone has this issue of skipping stitches, um, then let me know, because it'll be handy to try a few more troubleshooting issues. Okay, so the pockets are on, well the pocket facing is on, on both sides. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put just something there to stop it from falling. Right, so these pockets... I need to trim the seam allowance, so I'm just going to trim the facing side, it says to trim narrower, so I'm just going to trim that down just over half to be honest, Maybe, you know, just near the edge of that. And then the other one, just trim it slightly less. So it will look like this. So you've got kind of like, you can sort of see that edge like that. So I'm gonna repeat that on the other side and then it's gonna to say to, right, so then what I need to do, once you've uh, pressed it and done that, you then turn it on itself like this and you stitch this two seam allowances towards the pocket facing. So these will go that way, and then you stitch on top of this line here. Um, so we will go ahead and push these two lining bits towards the pocket facing and stitch down this seam line. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Right, my lovely, so I've got my little tabletop Cricut Easy Press, which I use as my iron for my seams. And I'm going to take this pocket that I've just overstitched or whatever that's called. What is it called? Understitch. So that is understitched. Looks beautiful. So now I'm just going to give it an iron. First of all, I can just press it and make sure it's nice and flat. And then we turn it. Let's just do it this way so you can see it a bit more. So there's the pocket, turn it on itself and you roll it so that the seam sits flush wrong side to wrong side and you want to kind of roll it so that it doesn't get shown from the obviously the outside of it, so like that and then we can just press 
across this. So there we go, so that's kind of how it needs to sit. And then from the outside, it looks lovely and clean like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side as well and then we can go ahead and attach the other pocket to this one. So once that front bit is done, the pockets go back underneath like that. That'll look tidier once it's all sewn and ironed and everything. Da -da -da. So we've got our front piece done. So we can move on to the shoulders, our back body piece right sides together and just pin these shoulders together at the seam matching up the notches although for some reason I don't seem to have my notch on my front one <laughs> that's fine lovely so then we just once that's pinned together at the shoulders we're going to stitch those shoulders together Do -do -do -do. both of those and that's it we just stitch them together and trim the seam allowance um, and press them towards the back and then we can move on to the neck band which is like the same as how you put it into a t-shirt if you've ever made a t-shirt if not um, it's fairly straightforward it just requires a bit of fiddliness with like pinning and stretching the neck band and stuff um, but yeah it's, it's just getting the hang of it I guess um, so I'm just going to go and sew the shoulder seams together and then the next step is the neck band So what I've done guys is I've prepped the body now, so I've, I did press these open but they keen to roll in on themselves, so just press your seams open and then with the neck band I just stitched the small edge together um, and then trimmed it, ironed it flat and then folded it so that the right side is out like this and then I've also pinned it at the half point from the seam as well. And also on the uh, neck bands or the neckline of your body, body pieces, I've just halved it as well on the back and the front pieces and put a pin on those half areas. So what I need to do is put this pinned section at the front and then where the seam is will go at the back. So this is my back piece. So what you can do is just put your pin, oh no, I need to turn this around. This is my back piece, so we need my back bit there. So we put that bit, make sure all the seams are lined up against where that pin is. And then we just pin that lovely jubbly. And then same with this one, we can match that pin to that pin. And then what we need to do is just go around and start sort of slightly stretching it. pinning it so just lay it out like that so it's quite small compared to the hole so what you need to do is you need to like slowly stretch it as you're pinning so that you get it to fit around the entire neckline and I actually find this quite fiddly so what I do is I just tend to do pins pin it all and then I can go away and look at it and then like fiddle with it if I need to And it's kind of easy to just do it and then I kind of stretch it as well at, whilst I'm on the sewing machine. Um, I'd say this is why this pattern is for confident beginners because working with stretch is not like, it's easy once you get used to it but it's not easy like if this is the first time you're doing it. And again for me, like when I'm sewing it, it I find this bit really fiddly. So just take your time if you're unsure. So once that is all pinned like that we can go ahead and stitch it on the sewing machine all the way around and then I'll show you what it looks like. So the neckline is done. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty hard to do because the neckline seems to be a lot smaller than it should have been. I'm just gonna cut this little Right, so that's, that's kind of done. Um, it will look a bit flatter and nicer with a steamy press, but it looks fine for now. And then I've just added one of my labels. So what we can do now is 
open this back up and it's time to attach the sleeve. So the sleeves are sewn in flat. So open it up like that. So we have our sleeve pieces. Now we want to match up the pieces by placing them. And the way you do this is you check double notch is on the back, double notch on the sleeve. So that will be the corresponding sleeve piece. So once you know, you can flip that over like that. And then you can start to match notches where they need to be. So for example, open that sleeve, open that seam allowance, match up the notch and just pin that in place. And then I do it by notches, so I'll go around first, do the notches. Like that. Once you've notched all of those, we can go ahead and just do our stitch all the way across. So I have just sewn the sleeves on and I thought I would show you guys an update um, and hold it up and like actually show you it kind of thing. I'm about to have a little break because my eyes are hurting. And yeah, the sleeves were a little bit on the tricky side to be honest. This fabric and my machine just don't like each other. So it's just having to sew every single seam twice and it's not fun. And I did try different tensions and it still didn't like it. So who knows, who knows why my machine just doesn't like jersey fabrics um, or knit fabrics, but anyway. So here is the top, sleeves are in, still open at the sides but it's looking nice and that neckline looks lovely. I'm not going to bother top stitching it, it does say in the instructions it's optional but because my machine is being naughty and the, and the uh, stitching isn't very clean I'm just going to leave it like that and hopefully it's fine. I did do a tiny bit of stitching on the shoulders just to keep the seam down um, which you can't tell you can't really see it because I did it close to the ditch but it just means that that will stay in place nicely and the next step after that is to sew the arm all the way down to the bottom that's what I quite like about raglan sleeves um, when you sew them in flat then what you do is you just attach it together by doing this I can do it quickly, Shift that sleeve and then all the way down you stitch that as one long stitch. My machine's going to hate that, I <laughs> don't know what's up with it today but anyway so that's the next step but I am going to go have a quick break um, and then I can come and do this bit and it's essentially only a few steps left. That's what I like about Tilly's patterns and things like you know t-shirts, jump dresses, that kind of thing. They just come together so quickly and it's like a nice you know day make. Hello, oh god it's super bright isn't it? Let's get this. Well, I mean it's going to be super bright because the sun is beautiful today. Um, it's the next day, I'm just finishing up my dress and I've just sewn those side seams together that I mentioned. Um, just trimmed those bits off as well. So those side seams are now together. See it's like a super long seam. Um, so that's really nice, it's basically coming together um, now, it looks like a dress. So now that's done, it says I need to do the cuff, so the arm cuff, and it's essentially exactly the same process I showed you with the neck band, where you sew the narrow part of the cuff together first, fold it in half and then stitch it to the sleeve. It is super fiddly, I hate doing cuffs because you've kind of got to stitch you've got to get that in your machine somehow and stitch this tiny amount here um, which I just hate doing but yeah all I've got to do is that but yes yeah, so I can just go ahead and put the arm cuff on and then literally exactly the same process for the hem band so again uh, the small sides together on the hem band I think there's two so you stitch both sides together and then fold it in half and sew it onto the bottom of the dress so yeah that's kind of the process i hate doing these ribbings so this is the last bit and thank god because i just sewing jerseys is just not my favorite it's it, they're easy to sew in terms of like the step like these panels and everything like that there's like hardly any pattern pieces but it's just sewing with stretch just is a little bit fiddly but 
yeah. So that's what we're going to do. It's essentially exactly the same as the neck band that I showed you guys. So um, with that kind of stretching it as you go along. So I don't really have to show you those details. I'll show you guys the finished result. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing the finished Tilly and the Buttons Billy dress. It was a really lovely thing to make because it only took me like a day to do it and it's nice to, to kind of put something together and get that kind of instant grat gratification from it because you know it's a nice quick make and even though I don't really like sewing knit and jersey fabrics, this came together pretty easily. So yeah, highly recommend it as a pattern. I'll leave it linked in the description box below. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.